Thank you for joining me on Crunch Econometrics. Today we are looking at Gregory Hansen co-integration test for structural break, that is when there is a break point that is unknown. So what is a structural break? This is when an event has affected the trend of a particular series. It is when movement in a particular series is distorted or truncated. It is also when there is a visible difference between the past and future movements in a particular series. Can structural breaks be detected in a series? Yes, it can be exogenously detected if you know the date of the break. And if you don't know the date of the break, it can be endogenously detected. So can structural breaks be modeled and estimated? Yes, they can. Like I said before, I'll be considering the Gregory Hansen cointegration test within the autoregressive distributed lag framework. We know that under the ARDL model, if variables are integrated of different orders, it is the bounds test for cointegration that is used. But what if there is a break in any of the series? It means that the bounds test will now yield inconsistent results. In that situation, we use the Gregory and Hansen 1996 test, which is designed for cointegration testing when controlling for structural breaks in a data. The authors extended the Engel and Granger 1987 approach, which involves testing the null hypothesis of no cointegration against an alternative of cointegration with a single break in an unknown date, based on extensions of the traditional ADF, Z alpha, and ZT test. So what is the null hypothesis of the Gregory Hansen test? The null simply states there is no cointegration at the breakpoint against the alternative that there is cointegration. And the decision criteria will be to reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of the ZT statistic is higher than the 5% critical value. Otherwise, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected. If the null hypothesis is rejected, what this means is that the linear combination of the variables exhibits stable properties in the long run, even though there is a structural break. Also, the authors formulated three models to accommodate the possibility of structural breaks in the cointegrating relationship. We are going to look at these three models when we are estimating. Interested reader can look up their paper, that is the Gregory and Hansen, 1996 paper. Some simple steps that will help you if you want to model your ARDL framework and you are having a structural break in your data using the Gregory Hansen integration test. So I have here, the first step is that you set up your stata to perform time series analysis. You have to do that first. Secondly, plot the graph of the series to give it a visual examination. Go ahead to perform the Gregory Hansen test if you observe there is a break in that data. If the ZT statistic is significant, then the null hypothesis of no cointegration is rejected. That means there is still cointegration among the variables despite the break. Next thing you have to do is to generate dummy variables for the breakpoint. Now estimate the ECM with the break dummies. Number six, compare the results with if the break dummies are not in the model and see what the results will look like. Now test for model stability with dummies in the model. Compare it with the stability test results if the dummies for the breakpoints are not in the model. So these are the eight simple steps that will guide you if you want to model your ARDL ECM framework and you are having some structural break. I have my variables on the top right corner here and as usual, I have my log file on and I have my do file in place. I have already written out all the commands that I want Stata to execute, so I don't have to type this all the time. So the first command to execute is the tset year command. But before I do that, let me show you what I have in my data editor. By typing the browse command, I have here three variables for this tutorial, the Gini index, domestic credit, and secondary education. I have 36 years observation, that is, I have a data from 1980 down to 2015. So I have three variables for this tutorial. 
So I'm going to run this command to prepare Stata to run time series analysis. So here's the output. I have my time variable set from 1980 to 2015. So we are ready to run time series analysis. The second step is to visualize the plot of the Gini index to observe whether there is a break or not. So this is the command. I've highlighted it. I execute. This is the plot of the Gini index. As you can see from 1980 up to 2008, 2009, thereabouts, or 2007, there is a break in the data. You can see here, there's a sharp break here. So we can see a truncation in the pattern of the Gini index. So this one tells us that uh, we have to go for the Gregory Hansen co-integration test. So step three, remember that Gregory Hansen has three models. So we run the first one. The first one simply says that the break is on the constant. So I have highlighted the command and I'm telling Stata to use the lag option from the Bayesian information criterion. I click the execute button. Screen, you can see the output. I have the ADF statistic at negative 5.48, the ZT negative 5.34. We only consider the absolute values. So if the absolute value of these test statistics are higher than the 5% critical value, I reject the null hypothesis. So I can see here ADF and ZT are both higher than the 5% critical value. And even in absolute terms, the lower the value, the better the model. So I'm sticking with the ZT statistic and my breakpoint date is 2007. Next thing I run model two. Have I lighted model two? Here the break is in the constant and the trend. I click the execute button. On the screen is a result for the second model. And again, both the ADF and the ZT statistics in absolute terms are higher than the 5% critical value. Again, the lower the value, the better the model. So I'm sticking with the ZT statistic and the breakpoint date is 2007. So this is for the second model. Let us run the third model and see the outcome. Here is the syntax for the third model, which says that the break is in the constant and the slope. I click the execute button, and there you have the results. Both the ADF and the ZT statistics are almost exactly at the 5% critical level. So again, the null hypothesis is rejected. So across the three model specifications, there is co-integration among the variables. So now that co-integration is confirmed, the next thing to do is to generate dummy variables for the breakpoint. Remember, my breakpoint is at year 2007, going by the ZT statistic. So I have written out all the commands here. I'm generating a dummy variable, Z equals zero, and I'm replacing it with Z equals one from the breakpoint year onwards. So I've written out all the commands, Again, I'm generating two additional variables. I'm interacting the break dummy with each of the regressor in the model. So this is what you do. You first generate the dummy variable and you interact it with the regressors in your model. In my case, I only have two regressors. So I'm going to highlight all these and I will execute. You can see in my data editor, I have the break dummy and I have the interaction of the break dummy with the regressors. You can see it here. So this is what you must do. Once the break is identified from the result of the Gregory Hansen, go ahead to generate a dummy variable and do exactly what I've done. The next step to do is to estimate the ECM with the break dummies. I have the command here. You can use my command and modify it to suit your own model. So I have the commands all spelled out and I've included the dummies in the specification. I click the execute button. So this is the result. You can see up here the code. It includes the dummy variables for the breakpoints. And here you can see my adjustment term. The coefficient for the adjustment term is significant at 1%. And for the long run coefficients too, only secondary education coefficient is not significant. Even the breakpoint coefficient is significant at 5%. So this is a good result. So that means the breakpoint has a significant impact on this model, as you can see. So to verify that, I'm going to run another model without the break dummy.
Here is the result. You can see the code here. The break dummies are not included. And when you compare with what we had before, the model with the break dummies is significantly different from this one and is a lot better than what we are seeing here. The adjustment time here, even though it's negative and significant at 5%, which is also good, but you can see the long run coefficient is exactly not what we're expecting. This is my main explanatory variable, the log of domestic credits, and is not significant. So that means the breakpoints has a great influence on this model. So going back to what we had before, you can see this one now. By including the break dummies, you can see my main explanatory variable is significant at 1%. So that means modeling the breakpoint in this analysis drastically change my results for the better. Next thing I do is to test for stability of the model when I have the break dummies included. So I have the Kusum syntax here. I highlight it and I click the execute button. You can see the result of the stability test. The Kusum square test lies comfortably within the 5% boundary. So the model is stable. Let's compare this with when we run the stability test without the break dummies in the estimation. So this is it. I don't have the break dummies here. So let's test for the stability and see what we have. So here you can see that when the break dummies are not factored in, there's a deviation out of the 5% significance boundary. So this tells you that the break point has a significant impact on this model. Comparing to what we had before, this is the model when we don't include the break dummies. So this is how the stability test turned out to be. Let me show you again what we did before by including the dummies. So here you can see it's stable. So I have neatly put out our results compactly in this form. So here you can see at a glance that the ADF statistic and the ZT statistic are all significant at the 5% level. So because the lower the statistic, the better the model, I chose the ZT statistic and the breakpoint year to be 2007. So here I'm saying that break is evident in prior 2007, such that if I ignore it and I simply estimate the regression using 36 observations, this may lead to wrong inferences which are not best fit for the model. So guys, when you are modeling structural break analysis, go through this procedure and observe the outcome of your results. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Please practice it with the way I taught you. If you need the data for what I use for this example, click on the link and you can have access to the data. Send us your comments and observations on what you want us to teach and how you want us to improve the quality of our tutorials. Thank you for staying with me. I hope to have you around next time.